The story of this company's origin is almost too incredible to believe. Unlike his contemporaries, R.G. Letourneau was not a conventional thinker. He was a devout Christian and, astonishingly, a sixth grade dropout. Despite his limited formal education, R.G. Letourneau went on to found a company that invented the forerunner of modern earth-moving machinery and electric wheels. Start of the journey this magnificent story unfolded when R.G. Letourneau dropped out of school and began working in an iron foundry at the age of 14, in the year 1901. At 21, he took a few correspondence courses and awarded himself a Bachelor of Motorcycles, aiming to become an auto mechanic. Eventually, he landed a job at a garage in Stockton, California. By 23, he co-owned the newly opened Superior Garage. In 1912, at the San Joaquin County Fair, he broke his neck while riding as a passenger in a car he'd modified for the race, causing his neck to lean to the right for the rest of his life. The Shock just at the initial stage of his career, at the age of 28, he returned after serving in the Navy for his country in World War I and found himself in big trouble. A car dealership in which he had 50% of the share was steeped in debt due to his partner giving everything to drinking. As a result, the Torno removed himself from the business with $5,000 in debt. To pay it off, he took a job repairing a broken tractor for a farmer. The success of the repair led to invitations to fix other machines as well, though this temporary work was short-lived. The Rise Then came the time to rise, and Letourneau slowly expanded to larger and larger land-leveling contracts. He continually underbid his competitors to win jobs, and would scramble to invent machines to speed up the work and keep them from going broke. Although there were many technological advances in other areas of commerce in the early 1900s, in the world of earth moving at the time, it was still in the Stone Age. Realizing the fact that roads were built by employing large numbers of men with shovels and utilizing mules to drag small plows, the Tourneau was among the first road construction contractors to introduce earth moving technology. Foundation of Interesting Philosophy The year was 1919, and as a Christian, he felt the tug to be doing more for God. He went to his pastor, Reverend Deval, for advice. R.G. thought that anyone who was wholly committed to Christ had to become a pastor or a missionary to truly fulfill the Great Commission. But after deep prayer with his pastor, R.G. Letourneau was shocked to hear the Reverend say the words that guided him for the rest of his life. God needs businessmen too. This was a revelation. He immediately began to consider his business to be in partnership with God. Reshaped Scrapers Letourneau redesigned the scraper, adding a generator and two electric motors to it, allowing a single operator to drive the tractor and move the scraper blade up and down. The new invention allowed him to move more dirt faster than anyone else. He continued to innovate and create new machines, selling his previous ones to local farmers in and around Stockton and the San Joaquin Valley. In 1926, he received and completed his first major contract to build a highway between Stockton and Oakland, California. An order for one of his machines from a contractor in Russia in 1929 led him to establish R.G. Latono Incorporated. In late 1932, Robert put rubber pneumatic tires on his tractors, a revolutionary move in that day, enabling him to traverse terrain more easily than the typical steel wheels. Still, R.G. Latono was puzzled as to why God would choose him to be his businessman, especially when at the age of 40 in the year 1927, a big construction job went bad and put him $100,000 in debt. But as he remarked later, after seeing what God could do to restore a business and a life, he uses the weak to confound the mighty. Although the job was completed without working on Sundays, R.G. was still deep in debt. He was able to buy some time with his creditors by committing to improve his financial reporting. The surety company installed an accountant named Mr. Frost to rein in the books. What Mr. Frost found was worse than he'd originally expected. For years, Letourneau had sold the machinery he'd built for himself when he got a little behind financially. Although he still considered himself first and foremost a road construction contractor, the selling of his earth-moving equipment inventions had been a profitable sideline for him. His attorney hinted at the idea of solving his financial woes by going full force into the manufacturing business rather than rolling the dice on the ups and downs of big construction jobs. He then turned his complete focus to the manufacturing of his machinery inventions. After that, his financial woes were a thing of the past. 
and when the rest of the country was plagued with the Great Depression, the revenue of his manufacturing business was as follows. 1932, $52,055.61. 1934, $340,275.49. And 1938, $1,412,465.68, all net profit. In 1935, following an invitation from Caterpillar, a business partner at the time, Robert built a second manufacturing plant in Peoria, Illinois, near Caterpillar's headquarters. When he discovered that the land along the river he'd purchased to build the plant was submerged due to recent flooding, RG innovated yet again, designing a crane welded to a tractor chassis. So within a month, the Peoria factory manufactured its first 13 large scrapers. In 1937, Letourneau designed his first self-propelled four-wheel scraper, the Tourneau Pool. In 1938, a third factory was opened in Tocoa, Georgia, followed by factories in Australia, England, Mississippi, and eventually in Longview, Texas. Mayor General Eugene Raybould said, Victory seems to favor the side with the greater ability to move dirt. So the needs of the Second World War rapidly grew the demand for earth-moving equipment to build and clear roads and runways. It was this demand that led to the establishment of a manufacturing plant in Vicksburg, Mississippi. The Tourneau's innovative technology moved more earth more quickly than anyone else, including helping to build an airship on Iwo Jima and fill bomb craters in Normandy. Step into electric machines. After World War II, the need for paper made RG create new machines for cutting and moving trees. When they started building big highways, they needed even bigger machines. Workers at the Longview plant not only made these machines, but also used them to help build parts of the I-20 highway near Longview. By the early 1950s, Latourneau's equipment was very popular. In 1953, Robert sold the earth-moving part of the company to Westinghouse Air Brake Company for $31 million. As part of the deal, Letourneau agreed not to make any more earth-moving equipment for five years at the Vicksburg, Mississippi, and Longview, Texas plants. During that five-year period, Robert turned his innovative energy towards the first electromechanical drive system, what he called the electric wheel. Placing an electric motor in each wheel allowed each wheel to operate independently creating opportunities for larger and new types of machines. With this technology, Letourneau created giant tree crushers, overland trains, log loaders, and machines that could cast concrete houses in a single pour. So taking a step into the new era, in the mid-1950s, Robert used new electric motor technology to build mobile offshore oil drilling platforms with 140-foot retractable legs. He made a deal with George H. Bush, who was the president of Zapata Oil Company, to create the first oil rig, named the Scorpion, at his own cost. If it was successful, Robert would earn nearly $1 million and some company stock. If it failed, he would cover all the expenses. Fortunately, his design was a success and revolutionized the industry. By 1970, over half of the world's drilling platforms bore the Letourneau name. Legacy Today, Letourneau machines use tires that are 13 feet tall and weigh over 15,000 pounds. His two-wheeled power unit, the Tourneau Pool, which RG built because Caterpillar refused to, was eventually adopted by Caterpillar and all of Letourneau's major competitors. His risky venture into offshore oil drilling platforms in the mid-50s paid off, creating the world's first mobile oil drilling platforms. The company Letourneau started in 1929 and led for 40 years. RG Letourneau Inc. was purchased in 1970 by Marathon Manufacturing Company. From 1970 to 1994, it was known as the Marathon Letourneau Company. In 1994, Rowan Companies Incorporated purchased and rebranded the company Letourneau Incorporated. Renamed Letourneau Technologies Incorporated in 2007, it was then purchased by Joy Global in 2011, though not renamed Joy Global until 2012. In 2016, Japanese-based manufacturer Komatsu acquired Joy Global, including its Longview manufacturing plant. Today, Letourneau's machines are manufactured as part of the Komatsu Mining Corporation. The Longview Letourneau plant became the focus of Letourneau manufacturing by the 1960s. As recently as 2000, the largest front-end loader in the world, the L2350, was built at the plant here in Longview. Today, the Longview plant continues to manufacture the largest loaders in the world. These machines are used across the globe, ranging from Montana to Brazil to Australia. And here, we end today's video. 
Share your thoughts about God's businessman in the comments below. And remember to subscribe for crazy videos on revolutionary machines and their creative inventors.